Nadata Atma He Gunam Na Dosham Na Priya Palam Utashnevad Ashinaha Parabra Diga Isparaha Nadata Atma Higunam Nado Shamna Kriyapalam Udashinavad Ashina Haravara Trigishvara Nadata Atma Higunam Nado Shamna Kriyapalam Udashinad Vat Ashinan Haravara Trikishvara Nadatarat Mahiko Nam Nasutam Nakriya Palam Udashina Ashinaha Harava Supreme Lord, He, indeed, Gunam, happiness, Na, not, Dosham, unhappiness, Na, nor, Kriyapalam, the result of any fruit of activity, Udashina Vat, exactly like a neutral man. Hashina, sitting in the crore of the heart. 
Para Avara. Three. Seeing the cause and effect. Ishwaraha. The Supreme Lord. Translation and purpose of His Divine Grace, Abhay Charanaravinda Bhakti Vedanta Swami Shri Prabhupada Ki The Supreme Lord, Atma, the creator of cause and effect, does not accept the happiness and distress that result from fruitive actions. He is completely independent of having to accept a material body. And because he has no material body, he is always neutral. The living entities, being part and parcel of the Lord, possess his qualities in a minute quantity. Therefore, one should not be affected by lamentation. Please repeat. The Supreme Lord, Supreme Lord. Atma, Atma, the Creator, the creator. Of, cause and effect, of cause and effect, does not accept the happiness and distress that result from fruitive actions. He is completely independent of having to accept a material body. And because he has no material body, he is always neutral. The living entities being part and parcel of the Lord, possess his qualities in a minute quantity. Therefore, one should not be affected by lamentation. Purport. The conditioned soul has friends and enemies. He is affected by the good qualities and the faults of his position. The Supreme Lord, however, is always transcendental because he is the Ishwara, or the Supreme Controller. He is not affected by duality. It may therefore be said that he sits in the core of everyone's heart as the neutral witness of the causes and effect of one's activities, good or bad, and bad. We should also understand that Udashina, neutral, does not mean that he takes no action. Rather, it means that he is not personally affected. For example, a court judge is neutral when two opposing parties appear before him, but still he takes action as the case warrants. To become completely neutral, indifferent, in material activities, we should simply seek the shelter of the lotus feet of the supreme neutral person. Maharaj Tichuketu was advised that remaining neutral in such a trying circumstance as the death of one's son is impossible. Nevertheless, since the Lord knows how to adjust everything, the best course is to depend upon him and do one's duty in devotional service to the Lord. In all circumstances, one should be undisturbed by duality, as stated in Bhagavad Gita 2.47. Karmani iva karashte ma palam kata jana ma kama polo hetur bhut ma ishango stu akarmani uh, you have the right to perform your prescribed duties, but you're not entitled to the fruits of action. Never consider yourself to be the cause of the results of your activities, and never be attached to not doing your, act du your duties. One should execute one's devotional duty, and for the results 
of one's actions, one should depend upon the Supreme Personality of Godhead. O Magyanti Mirandasya Janandanan Shalakaya Chakshura Melitandina Tajmaya Shri Hilinda Jaya Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Garata Shiva Shari Gaur Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare So here is pointing out, although the Lord is the controller of all the causes and effects that are going on in this world, he's, he, he doesn't act, he's, he's not enjoying or suffering uh, the different activities that are being performed. <clears throat> he's, so it's said that here, the Lord is neutral. He's like a witness. Uh, the super soul, he is witnessing our activities and giving the results in due course of time, either good or bad, happiness or distress. <clears throat> so more or less he is like the order supply, so the super soul is not the supreme personality of Godhead. Uh, because he is, he is simply fulfilling the desires of the living entity. His business is pleasure, uh, so therefore, Super Soul is not the the supreme personality of Godhead. He he functions differently, and uh, so he says he doesn't accept these <coughs> the results of different activities that the living entities are performing. Krishna uh, uh, says in the. <coughs> third chapter <coughs> there is no work that affects me <coughs> there is no work that affects me in this world <coughs> because because I don't aspire for the fruits of action <coughs> So this is how we are bound in the material world. We're aspiring for the fruits of action. We're performing activity, we want some result. <clears throat> so that attachment to the result is a cause of bondage in this world. So Krishna saying, I'm not like that. The living entities are like that. <clears throat> they're attached. <coughs> That's why they're bound up in this material world. Uh, but I'm, I'm not like that because I have nothing to gain. What do I want? Why I should desire something? I don't, I don't need anything. <clears throat> so therefore I'm free, I'm independent. <clears throat> and Krishna says that if you know this truth about me, how Krishna is completely independent and free, <clears throat> because he doesn't aspire for the fruits of his actions, then you can also become as free as me. Krishna is telling his secret here, how to become free from uh, these attachments to this material world. You don't aspire for the fruits of activity. Uh, Krishna says in that verse that, <coughs> or it's in the purple, that the, uh, the living entities <coughs> Oh yeah, Krishna says, I, I'm not becoming bound, <coughs> why not? Uh, because I'm, I'm not in it for myself. <coughs> I'm performing activities. Arjuna says, you're performing activities, Krishna. You look like a Kattriya, you're following certain Kattriya codes. So, why not, why, why isn't there a, a, attachment and reactions? Everyone else is doing the same thing, they're acting according to their nature as Brahmanas, Kachas, Vaishus, etc. And they're getting a reaction from it. So why you don't get a reaction? I see you've got your bow and arrow, you've got <laughs> your weapons and you're a king and you're, you're a Kachas, yeah? So why you, why you don't get bound also? You appear to be acting like anyone else. <clears throat> so Krishna says, I'm, 
I act, but I'm not acting for myself. This is the difference. Living entities, they're acting for their own sense gratification, their own pleasure. But I don't do that. I act for others. That's why Krishna says, I come here to establish religion and kill the demons. It's for others. That's, Krishna has no business to come in a material world to enjoy. It's certainly, <laughs> he's got his whole spiritual realm. God's business is enjoyment, the purpose of life, Krishna's pleasure. <clears throat> So certainly he's not going to come in the material world just to, in, to, to, in, to enjoy it. It's not a place of enjoyment. He, he keeps repeating again and again in Dukalayam. It's a miserable place. So why Krishna will come to enjoy? So he doesn't. He comes when I, when he's, when I come. I, I come for others. I don't live for myself. I live for others. So Krishna says, now you understand this secret about me. But I don't aspire for activity, my fruits of activity, I only act for, for helping others in Krishna consciousness. Then you can also become as free as me. Secret, Krishna is revealing his secret. Because we are a small part and parcel of Krishna's senses. <clears throat> like father, like son. So if we actually become the good sons, then we we'll, can become as free as the father. If it is subordinate, uh, uh, we don't follow the Father, then we can expect there's going to be some trouble. So an example is given, just like the, uh, there is a spider, he lays his web, the Margosh, puts the cobweb somewhere, oh, it's nice and clean here, that's good. I don't see any cobweb, but anyway, there's a cobweb. And uh, when the flies and pockets come and everything, uh, little bugs, they come, they get stuck on the web, it's very sticky. And then that's the spider's food, he rushes over and wraps him up for breakfast. And uh, so that's his food, so he, he, is, he is running freely all over the web, he doesn't get stuck. Everything, everyone else is getting stuck on the material world. So like that, the, the material world is built like this, it's built uh, to find everyone in the material world, to right, give them attachment. That's the, uh, uh, the, the purpose. So, Krishna is... <clears throat> so he's like that spider. spider. Spider is the... the best. The best of all living entities is the spider. He has something very unique for us. <clears throat> we have to struggle hard to build all these big buildings. The spider, he creates his own house, his own place. And then he withdraws it back when he doesn't need it. We can't do that <laughs> very so easily. But the spider has its unique city. Every, every living entity has a city that some other, other, someone else doesn't have. Prabhupada was talking about city and the, one of the babies in it was with the mathematics he started screaming, ah, screaming really loud. Prabhupada said, city, we're grown up, we cannot scream like that. We cannot make such a loud piercing sound. <laughs> but baby can do. She has something that the grown ups can't do. It's her protection also. So she, baby can't do anything else except scream. Uh, but it's a city. So, so that's okay, we may say, now Krishna, he's, he's God, he can do anything he likes, so he's no problem for him, he can come in the material world and not be entangled, but what about the other people, we're, we're not God, so... <clears throat> so then the example of the spider is given, that the, uh, the spider, he's running all over the web, and... <clears throat> When, the, when the, the spider has babies, tiny little, they, they're immediately running all over that web. They don't get attached. Huh? So like that, be a good son of God. Like father, like son. You become a good son of a God, obedient son, then you can also move freely on that web. You won't get entangled in this material world. But we have to be 
like father, like son, we have to, Krishna's here to preach a message. It should be our business. He is our father. So let's be like sons. We're here to preach a message of Krishna. It's Mahaprabhu. That's our business. We do that sincerely, then automatically we become free. No separate endeavor. So Paul points out here that talking about becoming neutral and indifferent from this material world uh, and how to do that we should simply seek shelter at the lotus feet of the supreme neutral person so that's Krishna He's, he appears to be the supreme uh, neutral person so uh, when Krishna is saying also that you should be neutral. So many times in Bhagavad Gita, be neutral, Arjuna, be neutral to dualities of this world. <clears throat> so, so this is the the, the Gyanis especially. They they like this neutrality. Shama 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 Dasha equanimity, peace of mind. Uh, so that's the, the, the so by gain they try to achieve that goal of equanimity, um, uh, neutrality. And Krishna's recommended in the uh, must be the or well, modes of material nature chapter. Krishna says that one who doesn't hate illumination. Attachment, uh, uh, attachment and delusion when they are present, nor does he long for them when they've gone. <clears throat> He's talking about the modes of material nature. Illumination means goodness, attachment means rajagun, and delusion means uh, ignorance. <clears throat> so they're coming and going all the time. So Krishna says, one who doesn't hate illumination when it's present, because it'll go up to some time. The modes are always in flux. <clears throat> Uh, he doesn't hate illumination and attachment and delusion. So Tama and Raja, they were, they, so these three are having a battle to to become prominent in the living entity. They, they're fighting for supremacy, it mentions in the chapter. The living entity, we, sometimes Raja becomes prominent, sometimes Tama becomes prominent, sometimes Sattva becomes prominent. So there always this flux is going on there. They're competing, so they're, but it's very bewildering in this material world. Sometimes you're in goodness, you can think very clearly the same, you, you discuss the same subject or the same activity another time, and Rajas is very present, and you don't come to the same conclusion. <coughs> Just the, the constant changing. So anyway, in that, cha in that chapter, Purple Prabhupada says, that, um, so how does one become aloof? from these interactions of material nature. <clears throat> and he says that you don't, you don't try to enjoy the material world, nor do you try to get out of the material world. So, many instructions like that are similar in the Bhagavad Gita. Uh, so, you don't try to enjoy the material world, that's the Kami, he wants to enjoy them. You don't try and get out of the material world, that's the Gyani. So once again, Krishna is speaking in Bhagavad Gita. Prabhupada in every purple brings it back to bhakti practice. <laughs> Otherwise, so much again, Krishna is speaking. Uh, he doesn't try to enjoy the material world, he doesn't try to get out of it. So this, this is knowledge. So that means that there are different processes to adopt this, how to stop trying to enjoy the material world. That means you've got to become self-controlled. How to stop, how to get out of the material world. Uh, you've got to, that, that, the jnani's got to, you've got to do your austerities. It takes a lot to get out of the material. It's not easy liberation. So you've got to do a lot of work for the jnani's. So if we, according to what Krishna is saying in the Bhagavad Gita, then we, you know, should we, we should be studying na nature, how to get out of nature. We should be studying the the spiritual realm, how we can get get liberated. 
But here Krishna's Prabhupada saying you don't have to do that. You don't have to take to the path of karma. You don't have to take to the path of jnan. Any path you don't have to take except the path of bhakti. Bhakti alone is sufficient. It will accomplish everything that your path of jnan will accomplish, your liberation. It will accomplish all of your... Um, whatever kind of happiness you want. Can be done by bhakti or everything will, can be achieved by bhakti. Uh, whereas by following these paths individually of jnan and... Um, that uh, it doesn't necessarily mean you're going to get bhakti. Even when you're perfect, you get your perfection, you get your... Not long, you get your mukti, you get free, for, free from, but still yeah, there's no bhakti there. Uh, so we can do bhakti right now in this material. But we're always hearing about this because we have to follow some process and, you know, it, this is what the scriptures are full of, how to become detached. There's an awful lot of this detachment being spoken in Bhagavad Gita. So, but it's not although we become yogis and live in the Himalayas with them, sit on a kushasana and bus, that's it. Or lie on the road like a python and eat something that comes past and leave or something. So that's detachment. They're certainly teaching detachment. But we don't have to follow all those. We simply follow the path of bhakti. The loving devotional service of Krishna automatically will get the results of all, all the other processes. Uh, so this is the uh, supremacy of, uh, of devotional service. So, uh, so therefore, although Krishna comes in this material world, because he's performing bhakti, because he's preaching to others, bhakti, come, practice bhakti, come back home to me. This is what Krishna wants. <coughs> uh, so therefore he's not bound because he's not living for himself. He's simply living for others. So here, this is, this, this is Krishna consciousness. Uh, we should be living for others. We shouldn't be living for ourselves. We got all these buildings, everything here, the temple, the deities, everything. What is it for? It's for others, actually. Prabhupada said, we're content to sit on the bank of the Ganga and chant Hare Krishna. But you advertise Swami Bhaktivedanta is sitting in Mayapur, bank of the Ganga, chanting Hare Krishna. He said, how many people will come? Oh, you give nice facility, you get them a nice guest house, some nice food, they can eat nicely. They will come. So, living for others. Of course, the servant of the king lives like the king, so we also enjoy. <laughs> so, So here, explaining how the Lord is always neutral, and he always says that I'm neutral. Well, throughout the Shastras and Vedas, he says how the Supreme Lord is neutral. But actually, Krishna is not neutral. <clears throat> uh, because he says, I favor my devotees. So that's not, that's not neutrality. That seems like <laughs> he's fav favoring his devotees. It doesn't seem very... God should be all loving, all kind, equal these other qualifications we hear about, then why does he say, oh, I favor my devotee more? Uh, so he is equal to everyone, but for his devotee, he is more, much more special. <laughs> but everyone else is equal. Uh, but for devotee, he takes a, a special consideration. Why not? Prabhupada said, the, the housewife, she loves all children, but she gives special attention to her own children. It's natural. I can't stop it. <laughs> so simply, Krishna is equal to everyone, but he gives special attention to the devotees, uh, those who are surrendering unto him. <clears throat> so, yeah, so, just one purple one. One verse, one purpose, so much knowledge and 
talking about liberation, talking about getting free, getting how the Lord is there uh, as a super soul. Uh, but uh, bhakti shines through, and uh, uh, Prabhupada also quotes this other verse that you have the right to perform your prescribed duties, but you're not entitled to the fruit. Krishna says, you're entitled to do your duty, you should do your duty, but you're not entitled to the fruit. That fruit should be for me. Well, we're doing activities, but we're expecting some fruit for ourselves. So, You have a right to perform your prescribed duties, but you are not entitled to the fruits of action. Never consider yourself the cause of the results of your activities. And never be attached to not doing your work. So you should do your work here, Krishna says. Don't, don't be attached by not doing work. Well, I'm, renunciation means renunciation, so I'll stop work. No, you should do your du duty. Uh, but you shouldn't be attached to the results of your duty. Don't consider yourself the cause of the result. I am doing this activity, therefore I'm going to get this result. The result you leave up to Krishna. Prabhupada said you act. You act as if you're doing the activity for yourself. The activity and the motivation you're doing an activity to get a result from it. You're very motivated, result motivated. You're acting like that, but you're dependent on Krishna for the result. You act like you're, the result is dependent on you, but you depend on Krishna. You're dependent on Krishna for the, <coughs> for the result. So he is, he is the cause of, he, he's the cause and the effect. So we just simply depended on Krishna in all of our activities, whether he wants to make us broken hearted or maybe he wants to, by kicking us away or he may embrace us. <laughs> That's the idea. We're dependent on Krishna. We'll do our duty to serve Krishna. And we depend on Krishna to give the result. The ultimate result is love of Godhead. Prem for multiple mom. This is the... <coughs> the ultimate fruit, uh, fruit of our activities, bhakti, love of Krishna. <coughs> so, so by, the bondage is very, very deep, We're hearing the philosophy, but to actually apply it all the time. <coughs> bondage is very, very deep, the attachment to enjoying the results of our activities in this material world. <coughs> yeah, even though we have knowledge, <coughs> uh, we forget Krishna. I put myself in as, as being the enjoyer and then suddenly I forget Krishna in one moment. Some sense object becomes before my senses and immediately I forget Krishna. At least a little, little for a little while. Some people do it. <laughs> I do it anyway. <laughs> so we forget. But we have knowledge of Krishna. Uh, so why do we forget Krishna? Uh, the reason we forget Krishna is because we've had so much experience of being the enjoyer in this material world. <laughs> this is our main identity in this material world. We want to be the controller and to enjoy it. This is Krishna's position. We're here to imitate Krishna. This is the. But Krishna says, Bhoktaram Jagatapasham Sarvaloka Meshran. I'm the enjoyer, I'm the controller of all times. So that position we're trying to take for Krishna, Purusha Bhav. 
that that consciousness of being that we take with us birth after birth after birth. then the body changes completely millions and millions of 400 8 million 400 thousand species one time round thousands of times round millions of times round then one little universe millions of universe this is what we're doing changing bodies again one thing doesn't change despite all these transformations and that is that I'm the enjoyer of this new body I've got this situation very difficult to get out of this conception <clears throat> that I'm the controller I'm the enjoyer so the thing is we have experience of enjoyment experience is there so naturally the senses will go to that sense object when it appears before us because we it appeared before and we entertained it and we got a good experience and those experiences we got a bad experience so we reject that <coughs> so the mind oh, he accepts I had a good experience last night <coughs> so he accepts and Uh, so that experience is there. So it's natural how the senses, they get attracted to something. Because they've had experience, there's some happiness. Illusory happiness. <laughs> there is some happiness there. Uh, so therefore we forget Krishna. And how much experience of spiritual realization we have. How much experience of spirit do we have how much realization of brahman we have i am brahman but how much re uh, what is what is brahman what is the self kim tat brahman kim adhyatma arjuna says what is this what is brahman what is the self krishna said the living entity is brahman the hum brahman and his eternal nature is called the self. So self-realization means understanding our eternal nature, our situation as Brahma. Uh, but who can remember that? Who can? That is our very self. And that's the whole existence of the spiritual world. But in the material world, we're not experiencing that. Even though we are Brahman, <coughs> but we're not experiencing it. Uh, but we have experience of material happiness and distress. In fact, the whole creation has been manifested for this purpose. To give you these experiences of ha happiness. You have to get the distress as well if you go along with it. Uh, but we have no experience. We've forgotten Krishna. We've forgotten ourselves, even. We are spirit. We are lame. I am lame and ill-advised. Madan Gop Mohan is my only shelter. I take shelter of his lotus feet. He's the only one who can give me some spiritual legs. <coughs> Pongo means, in that verse, Pongo means lame, one who cannot walk independently with spiritual legs. Just like if you want to go to the temple, I cannot go to the temple independently from this body. I've got to get up and I've got to walk down there, even though I'm not this body. But still, I cannot act independently uh, as spirit, because I've forgotten spirit. So that's why we always forget Krishna, because what we, we, the experiences we've had with, with the good and bad in this material world, that's attracting us. But then you have to come to your senses and pull yourself back and say, well, <laughs> this is not really where we're supposed to be doing, not really supposed to be the enjoyers. But that's why it constantly happens. We're constantly drawn away by the sense objects because the tangible experience of happiness, material happiness was there. And zero happiness of spiritual identity. Of course, I guess a lot of people have some realization Otherwise, you wouldn't be in Krishna consciousness. Something's really inspired, isn't it? But but most most of the of the 
for the people. We have, we've lost it. We've lost that spiritual taste. What is Krishna saying in Bhagavad Gita? One who has tasted the eternal he is the one who is uh, free from lust. Hmm? One who is free from lust, he has tasted the eternal. He knows how to surrender to Krishna. How do you surrender to Krishna? If you don't know who you are, how do you surrender to Krishna? First you've got to understand who you are. Then you can speak. If you don't know who you are, how we can surrender? So those, they're done with material lust. They tasted the eternal. They've been tasted that eternal nature. Now they know how to surrender to Krishna. Uh, so that's why it, it, uh, it, it's so difficult in this material world because we're just accustomed to experiencing different sensations through our senses. And that's the way Krishna planned it. The whole universe has been planned like that for Krishna. It's no wonder we're bewildered. We want to be bewildered. <laughs> well, we don't want to be bewildered, but we want to be the Krishna, we want to enjoy life. So we have to be bewildered. So Krishna bewilders us, and he makes this material world like that. It's so attractive, and you do get tangible experience of happiness. And you get bombarded so much uh, that we do forget Krishna. But it's made for that purpose. We wanted to forget Krishna. How we can be the enjoyers when Krishna's around, is the idea. So Krishna, as a loving father, okay, it's a foolish desire, but I'll fulfill your desire. I'll create your whole place where you can go and you can be the control engine. You can experience. Uh, so it's no wonder we're bewildered. It's no wonder Kichu Chechu is bewildered. So much attachment, so much happiness was there in the next moment. So much distress was there. So, uh, so the only solution according to these verses uh, that we have to take shelter of that completely neutral person. And that neutral person is inclined to his devotees. So we become his devotee, we render devotional service. Then Krishna says, I am. Everyone is equal, but I'm inclined to my devotee, even though he is neutral. But, uh, <clears throat> so without surrendering to Krishna, which is caused by the mercy of a devotee, it's the devotees who actually make us surrender to Krishna. If we didn't have these purpose or Prabhupada, how would we ever come to the conclusion of surrendering to Krishna? So by the mercy of devotees, one comes to this point of surrendering to Krishna. And then by Krishna's mercy. <coughs> uh, and without this surrender and approaching a, a devotee, then practically this is impossible to get out of this delusion. Chichuketu is going to suffer like anything. Uh, but fortunately, he met the devotees, Narada and Angura, and they instructed him in the science of bhakti. Uh, so otherwise, he would, he would have never overcome this grief and illusion. He would have gone a whole life lamenting. Uh, but by Krishna's instructions, then ultimately he's friend. And he sees the Lord. We're going to learn in a few. He actually sees the Lord. Even he's, he's so attached to Vihasta. I mean, how many wives? Thousands and thousands of wives. Uh, so much happiness was there, and then so much lamentation. Yet he sees the Lord after a few days, after, because of the grace of the devotees. Narada, they instruct him. And the Lord, he had mercy on him. Uh, because he got the mercy of the devotees. And Krishna, he, he, Krishna gave him his darshan. Yeah. Then he was completely free from all of his lamentation and delusion.
my memory is gained and my illusion is gone. Now do you understand? At the end of Bhagavad Gita, my memory is gained and my illusion is gone. He didn't say it the other way around. My illusion is gone and my memory is gained. No. First you understand. Your memory means Krishna gives you mem remembrance from me, come remembrance of him. So give, Krishna gives you remembrance of who you are. When you remember who you are, huh? what did Krishna say? By your mercy, I have regained my memory and my illusion is gone. So when you know who you are, that is the eternal servant of Krishna, when you actually realize that, all your illusion is gone. For Arjuna said, "Now I know I've, you've, I've regained my memory. I know who I am. Now my illusion is gone. It was all based on this false identification with the body. But now that now I understand who I really am, I have realization. Now all my ignorance is gone. All the ignorance is based on the bodily identification. I got to kill my family members in this battle. It's all based on body." But the moment uh, Krishna gave him remembrance who I am, now my illusion is I know what I'm not. <laughs> if, if I don't know who I am, then it's difficult to understand what I'm not. <clears throat> uh, so this is the amazing grace of Krishna. We take shelter of the devotees of Krishna and by the blessings of uh, Krishna then, he reveals everything, our identity, and that destroys all the illusion. And what do we do? We continue with bhakti, that's all we ever did. <laughs> continue in the activities of bhakti, there's no need for it. Trying to get out of the material world, or trying to enjoy the material world, but now we want to please Krishna. Without Now without motivation, without attachment. Now we serve Krishna purely. Shri Ma Bhagavatam Ki Jai Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Ram Hare Ram Ram Ram. Thank you. Any comment or question? Hare Krishna. You have a CD. <laughs> We cannot shout like you. Shri Prabhupada ki. Shri Prabhupada ki.